scissors, okay? But there's a potential trap in this, okay? That we see that others should serve us, okay? And this, the, the problem with this is we start serving others not because we love them, but we serve others for what we can get from them, okay? So we need to have all our supplies met by God, right? God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, okay? Sometimes he might use others to do that, but we need to look to God for our needs to be met, all right? So we serve, we serve others, but we don't expect that they serve us, okay? Because, so what, what happens here is if I need affirmation from others, if I need something from you, okay, what I'm doing is I'm actually elevating that person to God's level, all right? And as I said, your love to them will not be unconditional. And the scripture that goes along with that is because what you're actually doing is you're fearing their opinion. You're desiring what, what, does, what do they say about me? I, I need Neil to tell me nice things to, so I can feel good about myself, okay? Well, that is actually called the fear of man. And the fear of man is a snare, it says in Proverbs. Because then it's, if, if I'm requiring Neil to always, you know, say attaboy and stuff to me, well then that puts Neil in a tough predicament because he can easily manipulate me, right? He can then, if, he, if, he, if I'm not doing something he wants, then all he has to do is withhold from me until I get into a position where I'm doing what he wants, okay? And that's, that's um, dysfunctional, okay? We want healthy community. Does that make sense to everyone? Does anyone have any questions? I should have asked that. Does anyone have any questions from last week or comments from last week? Yes. Yes. That's good. She said that um, you get very conflicted if you're always looking to someone else for your value system and, and your needs to be met, and uh, and it's a, just a very tough place to be. Yes, Skipper. Yes, absolutely. It's it's sometimes people. People pleasing is to manipulate them, but sometimes it is so that you get your needs met. Okay, but a spirit-filled community where we're spirit-filled believers, our needs are met by God. Right? That's first and foremost. That's what we keep in mind, and so we we struggle against the flesh because that's one of the things that we're we're trained up in a family of performance. Right? You know. If you do well, you get rewarded. If you don't do well, you get punished, right? And so that's, that's what happens is you get into this mode of, okay, I know I can get what I want if I do what you like, okay? And getting back to what Laura said about, um, you know, people pleasing and, and getting my needs met. So growing up, that's, that was me. That what you described was was me, and I look back and I say that I was a chameleon. Whoever I was with, that's what I looked like. Okay, and there were times where my world collided because, like at weddings or something, because I had different people from different. You know, I had my parents there, and I had my friends there, and I, you know, I would act one way with my friends. I would act one way with my cousins, and I'd act one way with my parents. Well, what do you do when they're all together in one environment? Who do you act like? I didn't know who I was, and that's why 
our identity in Christ is so important because we need to know who we are because we need to know what place we are in in the body and what what role do we fill why did God create us and what does he want us to to do and be within the body Even in that, I've had the enemy come at me with, you should be doing this. Mm -hmm. You should be reading your Bible more. You should be praying more. Right. And, and condemnation comes in. But you're right. God, God require, what does he require of us? It's basically to walk with him, right? right? I, I mean, it's, yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. Thank you for that. That's. So, if we know our identity, I'm going to read Luke 4, 42 through 44. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep the, him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom to, of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in all the synagogues of Judea. So see, he had crowds of people telling him, oh, stay here with us. And he's like, no, I need to go elsewhere, right? He, he was tempted in all ways as we are, and he could have succumbed to that, but he said, no, he knew what he was sent for, and so he did it. So that's, that's what I want to encourage us is that we need to know why are we here, right? So let's go to Proverbs 29. Who wants to read Proverbs 29, verse 18, the first part of 18? Okay. Who has another a different version? That's because I want to I want to read in a couple different versions. Does anyone else have another version? Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Mm -hmm. And I have when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Uh, okay. <laughs> 18, the first part of 18. Mine says, uh, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Where there is no prophecy, the people cast off, cast off the strength. Mm -hmm. And so basically what that's saying is, if they don't have direction from God, then they're going to do whatever they want, Right? They're going to do whatever feels good. They're going to feel, I mean, that describes today pretty well, okay? But it also describes all of mankind, if you look at history. Um, so knowing what God says, okay, uh, and having, I, I like the, the version that says prophetic revelation, okay? Because 
in a spirit-filled community, we're going to have prophetic revelation, right? We're going to have direction from God of what, what do we need to do, all right? If you take a look at communities, not all communities have the exact vision, okay? And what I mean by that is, so if you take, say, the church here, the Hope Chapel here, and you take another church, their, their overall vision may be to make disciples. That's what Jesus said, right? Make disciples, okay? But how? What flavor? What does it look like? That can be varying, right? I've been in for the past, let's see, I've just celebrated 25 years in Christ, and I've been in small groups for the entire time, and every small group I've been in has been completely different, okay? And it, do, it doesn't matter uh, because the people make up the group. They have different, uh, their differences, right? There's differences. And so those combined differences <coughs> make up the feel of the group. We're in different places, in different seasons, okay? A group with small children looks different than a group with empty nests, right? Those, those two are going to look different. They may want to do the same things, but they're going to do them differently. And so th it's the same way as individuals, okay? God loves diversity, okay? I, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. If he can make every snowflake different he wants to maintain the the uniqueness in each one of us okay so think of the body of christ as a jigsaw puzzle okay and so if you have two pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that fit together right they don't look alike, especially where they look or where they fit together, they're going to look opposite, right? Now, imagine if someone came up with the idea of making all pieces of the jigsaw puzzle exactly alike, okay? Yeah, they would fit together real easy, okay? But what would the picture look like? Right? Any, any piece fit anywhere. I mean, you'd lay it out, and the, pic the picture would be all messed up. You wouldn't get what the creator intended for the picture to look like. Unless, I mean, it would be a lot harder to do that. And you bump the table, and the pieces are going to slide around. Right? So being knit together with those opposite features is important, okay? My wife and I are complete opposites, okay? But we are stuck together, okay? I appreciate the areas that she is strong because it makes up for areas where I am not. In the same way, she appreciates where I'm strong, where she is is weaker and we complement each other and it's a it's a wonderful thing and God gets the glory because he brought us together and he created us this way how dare I say to her you need to do it this way and you need to look like me because it's like if two people are the same one of them is not needed not needed if you have, I mean, if my wife is the same as me, one of us is not needed, right? And that's, that's the same way. How many times have we tried to, in community, tried to put round pegs into a square hole, all right? We have this need, so why don't you fill this need? And it's like, I don't have the desire, I don't have the temperament, I don't have the, the skills to fill that but because it's available, you want me to do that, okay? So looking at community, um, 
we, we need to celebrate the differences in, in each of us. Need to celebrate the gifts that you have been given. Okay? And I'm not... No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, right, I, I right. That. but also, yes, you could, and because anyone can clean the bathroom for, you know, if, if needed or, or whatever, but, like, you don't want me leading the children's church, okay, you just, you don't, yes. Yes, we do. God's given leaders. And that's one of the gifts that he gets is leadership. He says, let's, let's go there. That's a good question. What is it? We're talking about I wasn't going to go. I was going to go uh, to 1 Corinthians uh, 12 or Romans 12. It's there, too. Right. That's, that, is, that is often what people think, but that, my opinion is, hierarchy is the world's wisdom. Okay. It's not God's wisdom because if we're seated with Christ in heavenly realms, right, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, that looks, okay, so if Jesus is sitting here and we're sitting and his body is sitting alongside of him okay that does not look like a hierarchy to me it does Yes, because, because of this, we don't serve, we, we get, we give a lot of times, or we serve a lot of times, so people can serve to climb the ladder, right? That's, that's what, you, what is taught at in corporations, right? The more you perform, the better you perform, you go up the ladder, okay? Well, there's only one in... As I read this, there's only one performance that counts, and that's what Jesus did. But the other word that comes is control. Very good. Who controls the community? Who, who controls? Spirit-filled community. So who do you think controls a spirit-filled community? Spirit. 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 Mm-hmm. Not like the leaders control. The leader serves. That's right. Yes, exactly. The leader serves. So the, the high, the, Jesus said, the higher up you want to go, the lower you got to go, right? The more you serve. So if you want to be first, you have to be last. He who wants to be the, the best has to be the servant of all. That's good. Oh, they'll take care of it because they're the leaders mm-hmm. and not doing anything and really not to doing your part to be part of that. Exactly. So, so there was a disservice done uh, many years ago in the church where they said, okay, let's leave this to the professionals. And you had this clergy laity split. Okay. So the clergy, the leaders could, are, were the only ones that could read scripture. All right, and they read it in a language that 
no one else knew, okay? And, oh, by the way, if you have questions, well, then you go to them and they'll tell you what to do, okay? Well, that, that's a disservice, okay? Let's, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. So before we uh, read this, I want to ask a question. So if I ask Neil, if I give Neil a task and say, Neil, um, I want you to sweep the floor so that there's no dirt, debris on the floor, okay, that's, that's the prerequisite I ask him to do, and then he sees there's dirt and debris on the floor, then what should his response be? Right, right. So the point I want to make is if, if you are told something is given for a reason and you see that reason is false or not there, right, so there's dirt and debris on the floor, all right, then that means the other has not, still needs to be there, right? And, and I know I'm not saying that well. So let's... Yes, if the job's not done, then you have to do it. So if, jo- if Neil's job is a floor sweeper, okay, he doesn't, he is still needed if the floor gets dirty, right? Yes. Right, so that, that is needed, that, that particular role is needed because the floor is dirty, okay? So let- and, and what, if there someday in the future where floors no longer get dirty, then I will be needed. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> he said, if someday in the future that for some reason the floor doesn't ever get dirty, then he is not needed and he can retire. Okay. So let's, Neil's tracking with me. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> so uh, Ephesians 4.11. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son in our faith and not, wait, in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring to the full and complete standard of Christ. Okay, so as a body in the world, are we full, complete, mature, and unified? No. No. So these roles are still needed. Now do you see where the example of the sweeping the floor comes from? Is, Is because I want to show that we need to have these five fold roles active in the body of Christ to mature and set and equip equip people for doing God's work. It's not the professionals that do all the ministry. It's everybody does the ministry, okay? These five functions equip us to do the ministry, okay? Any questions there? But not control us. Not control us. That's right. Equip. Equip. So if, if we don't feel equipped, then what's, what's our response? If I don't feel equipped, what should I do? Well, I'm not doing nothing. Is that, is that my response? No. I serve. I ask God to meet all my needs, God, I need to be equipped. Okay? I've, I've seen, that this, this is an example in my life, okay? That I have been like that where I'm like, I don't feel equipped, and God provides someone to come in my life and speak into my life and provide opportunity to equip me. Any questions? Comments? Yes.
So there are different, that's a very good question, and that's why we have this class, because Neil gets into a lot of that. Uh, there are, so there are gifts of the Spirit, yes. Anyone can prophesy at any time as the Spirit wills, okay? Just because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet, okay? Just because you prophesy twice doesn't make you a prophet. You could prophesy on a regular basis weekly and not be a prophet. Does it matter? Okay. <laughs> That's, so getting back to your point before where we have leaders and we establish them and we worship them and we give them titles and everything, what if a prophet was equipping people and he didn't have the title of a prophet? Does that not make him a prophet? So again, is everybody a prophet? No. These are five, these are five, um, unique functions in the body of Christ, okay? So, yes, we should all prophesy, okay? And yes, we should uh, seek to be equipped, all right? We should all, we should all uh, give, right? But do we all have the gift of giving, right. right? We should all be ready at a moment's notice to give a reason for the hope that we have but does that make me an evangelist if I tell someone on the street, you know, the Holy Spirit prompts me, so he gives me a word of knowledge. So so that's one of the things that I I want to try and get us away from is trying to why do we have to put a title on everything? Well, because Paul did. Pa, but sort of, he did like he did, people. Right. Evangelist like, but is that a function? <laughs> Okay, instead, what if it's not a person? What if it's a group of people? What if it's a couple people? Okay, because if you take a look, so if a church is 200 people, how many pastors do you need? One? Okay, so if Jesus was the best pastor around and he only had 12, right? I mean, there's all sorts of of things we can we can uh, get into um, but again how do we keep this without adding hierarchy without worshiping and elevating the position okay right. it's it's like but, but then we're also mm -hmm. talking about okay but there are things that different people are have strengths in yes and they fit in this role and that's yes what we're it, You're just it is. I, I am trying to de-emphasize on purpose, yeah. okay, but what I because I want us to think this way. So can so I'm not a prophet. Can I prophesy to a prophet? Sure. I guess. Sure. It, there's nothing scripturally that says I can't, right. right? So, but if I know this guy's a prophet and I know that I'm not, mm -hmm. okay. I have a barrier now that I have, if, I, if God gives me a word for that man, uh -huh. I have a barrier that I have to overcome if I think that, if oh, he's, yes, if I've elevated him right. as a prophet, instead of seeing that he is gifted by God to do a thing. Mm -hmm. He's not gifted by God to hold a position. Right. There's only one position that's being held, and that is at the right hand of the Father, okay? So... We're, we're all equal, so he has a function to do. A, a prophet has a function to do. A pastor has a function to do. A evangelist has a function, and that's to equip, okay? A teacher, okay? Does that, does that make sense? So, I mean, it sounds like you're saying there are positions, sort of. I mean, there's roles, but you're roles just trying to... Mm-hmm. Trying to emphasize that there isn't a hierarchy like 
Yes. Yes. Then yes. Then so we're, we're still all on the same. Right. So if we we look at the scripture earlier, Jesus was a and is a a prophet, a evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, an apostle. He he was the culmination of these, okay? And when he went to sit at the right hand of the Father, it says he ascended and he gave gifts to men. Okay, he gave some to be. Okay, it doesn't say he gave all to be, he gave some to be. Okay, and then he defines what the purpose is. Okay, it's not so that we can have someone elevated and it's not so that we can say, so we shouldn't be demanding of them, right? and we shouldn't be elevating them, and they shouldn't be controlling us. I mean, this, this is where the community comes in. If we have a, a mission, a purpose, a vision, revelation from God, well then what they're doing is helping to equip everyone to do that, to move forward as one, okay? And how, how God showed me this. So if, let's go to Joel, okay? So what, what we're going to, to read, all right, is in Joel 2, and what I want to, to say is that, would it be fair to say that the body of Christ should continue the ministry of Christ on the earth? Is that a fair statement? Okay. So in Acts, and Neil can give you the reference, in Acts, I believe it's in Acts, it says that Jesus came to do good to all and destroy the works of the devil. Right? 10:38. Acts 10.38. Okay. So we should do good to all and destroy the works of the devil. Okay. So when we see because God does call us an army, okay? But our battle's not against each other, right? We are executing authority over the devil, okay? So when I read this, that's what I want you to have in mind, is just as Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, which he succeeded, now we execute that judgment on the devil in the earth. Okay? So Joel 2, starting in verse 7. The attackers march like warriors and scale the city walls like soldiers. Straightforward they march, never breaking rank. They never jostle each other. Each moves in exactly the right position. They break through defenses without missing a step. They swarm over the city and run along its walls. They enter the houses, climbing like thieves through the windows. The earth quakes as they advance, and the heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord is at the head of the column. He leads them with a shout. This is his mighty army, and they follow his orders. Okay? Hmm? Is he talking about locusts? I, I think this is a picture of what he wants us to be. Okay? And what I want, when I read this one day, this is the picture that the Holy Spirit gave me. Have you ever seen a, a school of fish move as one body? Or a flock of birds 
fly as one body. You can see that they're individual, but they're moving as one. They don't run into each other. It's like they're so close together, how do they not run into each other? Okay, this is what I see depicted here. And when we stand up as the army God's created us to be, united as one, as he is in the front and he gives the orders, we can move against the forces of darkness and dispel them. Any questions, comments? What version is the Bible? New Living. She asked uh, what version my Bible is. It's New Living Translation. So what I want us to do is, again, where there is no prophetic revelation, people do whatever they want. I want us to get what is it God wants us to be. As spirit-filled believers, we're not called to be individuals. We're called to be in the body of Christ, into a community of believers, a priesthood of brethren. Okay? We're called to be, as Peter says, living stones, building a temple. Not only are we an individual temple, but we're living stones as a temple, okay? Being built up, all right? I don't understand it all, okay? But there's a lot of togetherness that I see God has for us. Yes, sir. as being led by the Spirit. So, so Neil, as a floor sweeper, should be looking for someone to sweep alongside him, to train him, train them how to sweep the floor and what does it mean to have all the debris up and all the, the dirt up, right? Right, Neil? Right. <laughs> That's what equipping means. It doesn't mean that he does the work alone it may mean that he has a team of people to do it. Other questions, comments? So it's very organic. Very organic. What needs to be done. Yeah, organic. I, I love that word. Going back to the statement that I said is that true spiritual community grows, happens organically in the context of missions. All right, when there's a purpose, Okay, when, when you're in a spirit-filled community with a purpose in mind, things happen organically. That means someone, the Holy Spirit will nudge someone to fill something to do. If something needs to be done, they'll see that it needs to be done, all right, and they'll get it done. If they can't do it themselves, they'll find someone to help but it, they'll, they'll take the response. They won't wait for a leader to come tap them on the shoulder and give them permission, okay? If, if you're waiting for that, okay, Jesus gave you permission, okay? There's your leader giving you permission. He gave you permission to go into all the world and do what he did, okay? Start in your backyard and move on out. That's, that's how he said it, plain and simple. I don't necessarily like offices, but I understand what you're saying. Yes. Exactly. Just to clarify a little bit. Yes. Those are very specific. They're, they're roles. roles. They're roles to equip. A gift is a instant is a instance of okay, Keith needs to be encouraged. The Holy Spirit sees that and so he gives me a word to 
to speak into his life to encourage him. And that's and the flow and change too, though. That's yeah. what you were saying where everybody can prophesy or Exactly. So that's that that's so that's a that's gift. Yes. Yes. No, that's fine. Were you gonna say something? Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking about um, No, that's it, fine. I like your word organic, but I also especially in light of this passage this uh, of the of the locust or God's army. Mm-hmm. Yes. From the outside, from, from us. Yes. But really the ideal, wouldn't it be that it's very structured, but starting but by the Holy Spirit, structured by the yes. Holy Spirit, that he is the one, that everybody is so in tune with the Holy Spirit that we're all acting as, mm-hmm. as one, and we mm-hmm. are organized. It, it's a very organ, mm-hmm. it's an organization, but not one to be put on it, one that, right. I mean, and that's kind of what this picture is, mm-hmm. know, God's Mm-hmm. And they're, they're moving together as, as one. That's right. What she said was uh, that organic, even though I'm using the term organic, that uh, it, it still would still be very structured uh, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and you're absolutely correct. Um, and I'm going to share something I shared last week because uh, one of the scriptures, uh, and I, it escapes me now, um, 1 Corinthians 14, where it says, make sure everything is done in, in order, okay? And I've heard that scripture quoted to control what was going on, okay? And so thinking about this and having us um, be led by the Spirit and having order, control, and we don't want to have control. We want the Holy Spirit to be in control, okay? And God told me one day, um, he said, look at the forest. And he said to me, um, because I used to, as a teenager and everything, I used to go out and walk in the woods. And to, to us as humans, the forest looks very chaotic. Trees falling everywhere, you know, leaves, whatever. It's just, it looks very chaotic. But there are organisms and micro uh, ecocosms within the the forest that is very structured okay has a very structure to it and the holy spirit said to me if man had his way with the forest he would put all the trees in a row and he would have them by type and kind okay and it would look very neat and, and he would have a way to have them all you know, function together, and it would be, he said, it would be neat and orderly, but it would be sterile. And God's way of order brings life. Okay. So when we give him his way, he has life in you. All right. Have you ever been under an organization that is so controlling that you feel like you're stifling? Okay. That's not life, all right? And these um, five roles, the fivefold, are to bring us life, to set us out and equip us and say, yes, you can do it, okay? That's what they're there for. They're not there to control. They're to give us life and set us out because that's what Jesus did, all right? I'm, I'm thinking of when Jesus sent out the 12, all right, and they go out, and he says, you know, heal the sick, cast out demons. I give you authority and go do it. And they come back. And the first thing they're doing is who did it best, right? And Jesus doesn't, and I'm stealing this from Neil. <laughs> Jesus doesn't sit them down and tell them and correct them that, no, that's not the way. You guys have a bad attitude and you have it wrong. What does he do? He sends them back out with others who are less qualified than they are and sends out 70 of them to go do the same thing and tells them the same thing, okay? He is a God that gives permission and says, go do it. Learn by doing. Don't learn, then do. Learn by doing, 
It's on the job training. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that's a very good point. So does a dead man have an ego? No. So basically, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. There's no ego in that. And that's what true spirit-filled community is, is a part of, is they don't, they've put their lives down, they've laid down their lives because Jesus laid down his. Good question, though. Any other questions? Comments? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. children don't try to figure out the day and how you're going to get them all here and you're going to do this and who's going to help you and so he said walk in it it's the same in both because the spiritual is different this is the natural but he said just walk in it and trust me something you said reminded me and trust me for the day as you're walking it out mm-hmm. where they need to be how this is going to be supplied you can just walk in it and walk in me and mm-hmm. so that's the same principle I just thought that that's was very right true. that's that's very good to to walk in and not try and figure out the day he said about our uniqueness mm-hmm. which was all ordered in the woods and yes the forest I had mm-hmm. it the way because I'm a type A, you know, organized and structured and everything, mm-hmm. there would be no life. So even in, in saying walk in it, it's the same thing. So there'll be life mm-hmm. and not try to pin it down so tight, so tightly that I know from A to B to C, mm-hmm. and that's five minutes here and 30 minutes there, there's no life. It kills. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. So that's if you're in silverware, silverware drawer, it doesn't matter if there's sand or sand. <laughs> <laughs> that's. What, what you're talking about, Laura, is actually cutting off the edges of the, right? Because you want order, so you're making all the pieces square so they fit together, so nothing's out of place, and it's, it's like, yeah, it is. It's not yes. that we're looking for disorder. No, that's, that's good. We're not looking for disorder, but we're not looking to control. We're looking for a different kind of order. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, sure, divine guidance, I think it should be for your sphere of influence, okay? So, if you... Obviously, the President of the United States needs more divine guidance than a Janet, than Neil sweeping the floor. Okay. He has more responsibility. Right. So if you, if you take a look, Paul says, don't be eager to teach because they will be held to a higher account. So therefore, if they're a higher account, higher responsibility, they need divine, more divine guidance. Exactly, so, and, I mean, and then we would all be in sync, and, and yeah. then we would be in the full unity of the, the, the faith, right. right? And then those roles wouldn't be needed. Actually, so they, they would probably be needed until Jesus comes back because they w- would need to keep the order. Well, yeah, I mean, the roles are not a hierarchy. That's what we're trying right. to get at, right? The mm-hmm. roles
how do you measure divine guidance? And it's not a quant. It's that that yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know what I we see. think it should look like, but God might have a different idea, a different day. That's, that's exactly right, because we tend to get into patterns, right? It's like, this is the way it worked this time, and so this is the way it's supposed to work. If you look at, the, uh, if you look at David and his war plans, he went to the Lord all the time, and the Lord really never gave him the same plan twice. Okay, so that's, that's true. That's a perfect point that we need to go, all right, today has never been lived before, so I need divine guidance for today because it's never been lived before, and that's all that I have been given. I can't do anything about yesterday. Tomorrow isn't here yet, so I need divine guidance for today. Skipper? That's, 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 that's good, but it should also still be as God prompts us, right? And I want to do it in his strength, not in my own strength, right? Because if I do it in my own strength, who gets the glory? Did I see a hand over here? From a, from a practical standpoint, it should fit at any level. Okay. At any level, it could be the it could be the three people, right? Jesus and his two his three closest. So it could be the four of them. It could be Jesus and the twelve. It could be him and the seventy. It could be him and the hundred and twenty. It it works no matter what. That's I'm I'm trying to to have it so that it can be used in whatever way a community can be drawn about, right? Because a, a community is just a bunch of relationships, right? And there is a purpose behind those relationships usually, okay? Right? I mean, a small group has a purpose, a church has a purpose, a regional group of people have a purpose, so... Other questions or comments? This is all good. Right. So, in what I guess, do you have a question or no, what? What's your Well, and there isn't in the Christian community. There's not a hierarchy, but yes, right. There shouldn't be, right? Is what I'm is what I'm proposing, but right. So, one of, one of the things that I I think of is that is a there's a um, correlation or a parallel where you see the hierarchy. I I believe that is worldly wisdom. What James calls worldly wisdom. And then what Jesus gave us is godly wisdom, okay, of how to organize, okay. And we tend to, because we were raised in Adam, right, we were raised under the fall, 
we tend to gravitate towards this because that's what we were raised with. We were raised with a hierarchy. We were raised with that. We were raised with principal, assistant principal, teacher, and then students, you know. Um, and if you look, that's, that's everywhere. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to be able to get rid of that until everyone if everyone on the earth were a spirit-filled Christian and we were living in perfect community, then yes, I believe that those would melt away. Okay. Thank you. Exactly, and that's available for all of us, yeah. right? Um, so, the gifts of the Spirit, right? Which are, you know, uh, well, let's let's go there and read them. First uh, Corinthians twelve. Who wants to read uh, verse 7 through 11? First Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Who wants to read that nice and loud? Okay, Teresa. Okay. Whose gift is it? Right? So you have, let's take this out of the way, right? So you have God, and yes, Holy Spirit's in you, but He wants to, He wants to, to, manifest a gift through you to someone else. Who owns the gift? The, the Spirit. Right. It's a gift of the Spirit. This person does not have ownership of it. So if this person prophesies, he doesn't have the gift of prophecy he has been used by the Holy Spirit to prophesy. Okay? We go around and we say, well, I have the gift of prophecy. Okay? It's like, okay, so if I prophesy, I have the gift all of a sudden. Can I prophesy at will? According to that scripture, according to, to verse 11, can I prophesy at will? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go back to to Neil and sweeping the floor. 
if all of a sudden, if Neil's been sweeping the floor for 10 years and he can sweep the floor in 10 minutes flat, he worked down from doing it half hour, he can do it in 10 minutes. Now if I go ask him to clean the toilet, is he gonna, do, is he gonna be able to do that very quickly the first time? Okay, so a lot of times I feel like because we're comfortable with a certain way that the Holy Spirit has manifested in us, that we are in, we put ourselves in that place to do that. And because we have been trained and taught that, oh, this is my gift, okay? But what I wanna say is that we can be at, ready at any time to do any of these as the Spirit wills, okay? So we need to be open and available, and it may be messy the first time you do it, okay? We don't expect to do it proficiently the first time. We just, God wants obedience from us. He doesn't want perfection. He has already made us perfect, okay? We need to, he, he wants us to do and be available for him, okay? Like Libby said earlier, where Dan Moeller, Todd White, Bill Ossop, they're available. They've made themselves available time and time again, so God uses them, okay? Why does God use them and not someone else? Has this person made themselves available and gone through and, and been used time and time again, okay? Yes, Skipper. Very good. And the more you can start to hear God's voice, right? Like I'm starting to learn what prophecy is. I'm starting to learn his voice. I'm starting to distinguish his words from mine. That which is what you told me in prophecy class, which is the concept. Yes. Familiar with. Mm -hmm. 